This is how to do GCSE electrolysis, Mr. M for Chem. Don't forget, smash that subscribe button down there. Much appreciated. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, let's get on. I trust that you've already done this unit and you're using this video as a review tool. That is its intention. Okay, I'm not here to introduce first principles. I'm here to review what you're going to be doing. Okay, let's crack on. So I want you to watch the video and make some notes. You've already got notes, add to them. Just scribble on the side, you know, active, active revision is key. Print off these notes. Attempt to answer the in-video questions as you go through them. Review the answers by replaying the video. It's on YouTube whenever you want to. If you wake up at midnight, have a snack, watch the video. You never know. It might just get some of those uh, neural pathways up there. And then consolidate using past paper questions. You don't need me to tell you just where to find those past paper questions. You all know, right? I know. Okay, let's go on. So we have uh, in electrolysis, let's have a look at the basics first of all. Um, we need to look at uh, both syllabuses, the IGCSE and AQA. They're very similar in what they're trying to achieve. IGCSE, first of all, they want molten, which is melted. Molten is not a word that we use in everyday language, but it just means it's gone from solid to a liquid. We put some heat energy in and change the uh, physical state. Uh, redox in terms of electrons. I know you're all thinking about the oil rig, and we'll look at the oil rig later. Uh, lead bromide is mentioned in the syllabus as one that you must know. So let's just write the formula here, PBBr2, and it must be molten, which is liquid. Uh, sodium chloride aqueous, AQ, means it has water in there. And crucially, it is concentrated. They don't want to, you to know what happens when it's dilute because it's slightly different. You might do that if you choose to do chemistry later for A-level or for IB or for AP, whatever it happens to be, then uh, you'll do the dilute sodium chloride. But for GCSE, it is just the concentrated form. Sulfuric acid, I should have done my subscripts there, H2SO4. Uh, acidified water gives exactly the same products. We'll come to that shortly. And then finally, electroplating of copper, and that will leave you happy for IGCSE. AQA, uh, Lead bromide, yes, aluminium extraction is peculiar to the AQA, it's not on the IGCSE. Uh, water, half iron electrons, and there are no named processes. So the only um, difference will be the aluminium extraction. So if you're doing IGCSE, don't worry about aluminium, unless you're doing the triple award, then you can. And if you're doing AQA or IGCSE, all of the other things, they all apply to you. So. Um, hopefully you've printed off these notes. Maybe now is the time to have a look and see if you can answer any of these questions before I go ahead and begin to answer them for you. It's all part of the service. Okay. For a compound to be electrolyzed, it must be ionic. How do you know? It must be molten or aqueous. It must be not solid. Solids will not electrolyze. Why will solids not electrolyze? Because the ions, and it is the ions, must be free to move. I used to sing this at the front of the class, go, free to move. Maybe we should just carry on doing that. So the ions need to be free to move. They can only be free to move if they are in the liquid, which we call molten, or if they are dissolved, which we call aqueous state. So only molten or uh, aqueous. If it's solid, there'll be a little s Solid, cannot, even if it's ionic, cannot. But liquid, L, and AQ, we can. We can electrolyze those. So how do you know it's an ionic compound? Well, you all know it's a metal and a non-metal. In terms of electrons, share or transfer? Transfer. So one, the metal loses the electron, the non-metal, gains that electron. The metal then has less electrons than protons, so overall it's positive, and the converse is true for the non-metal. It now has more electrons than protons, so the charge overall is negative. So how would you know if it was, if you know it's ionic, metal and non-metal, how do you know it's covalent? Yes, you are correct. Two non-metals. So where, here's Mr. Midgley's patented periodic table, where would we find the metals? Okay, the metals, all of these are metals. All of these are metals. That little strange hydrogen up there is not, it's always a, 
a welcome member in group one, but no one's quite sure where to put it, to be honest. Um, so that's not a metal, clearly it's a gas. And then most of these here, sort of 75, 80% of the periodic table are metals. So if it's from, it's normally from group one, group two, you might find iron or copper from the transition metals in the middle are used for GCSE, but that's very rare. It's going to be sodium or magnesium or calcium, something of that nature. Non-metals are here. Clearly we have group seven or group 17. And here in group 17, these are the halogens. Halogens, what are they? Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. What else are non-metals that you see at GCSE a lot? Oxygen, O2 minus, magnesium oxide, MgO, OMG, yay. So common questions. From a list of chemicals, so here we have CO2, sulfur hexafluoride, sodium oxide, and difluorogen, difluorogen? difluorine monoxide. Um, clearly, the one which can be electrolyzed, if it is liquid or aqueous, that would actually form a hydroxide solution, is the sodium oxide because you cannot electrolyze CO2, SF6, or F2O. At GCSE, you can't anyway. You could look at a list of states in terms of the states that we have here. So we've got calcium chloride solid. Oh no, well, we can't do a solid, can we? So let's have a red pen for, no, we cannot. Um, H2O liquid, we'll come back to that. CS2 gas, well, it's a gas. No, we can't do gases. Um, sodium iodide, N-A-I-L, Yes, that's good. Let's go. Let's give that a green go. We can. What about water? Can we electrolyze water? Well, water's quite interesting. Well, it's always interesting. It's 80% of you, right? Um, water's very interesting and very useful. Um, water is slightly, slightly has some ionic character. Don't worry about that. But you can electrolyze water. You actually have to persuade it with some acid. And we'll go through that shortly. So the basics, what do we know? Definitions of reduction and oxidation. What are they that you need to know for GCSE? Reduction is the loss of oxygen. Reduction is the loss of oxygen. Oxidation, let's do the converse, is the gain of oxygen. So one definition is in terms of the oxygen. What about electrons? Oil rig, remember the oil rig? O-I-L-R-I-G. Oxidation is loss of electrons. And reduction is gain of electrons. So which one is missing? Well, it's rarely asked, but it is on your syllabus, whether you're doing GCSE or you're doing, uh, IGCSE, or you're doing AQA. So oxidation is the loss of hydrogen and reduction is the gain of hydrogen. Three definitions. This one I'll put in brackets. It's rarely seen in this uh, topic area of the syllabus. It is seen much more prevalent in the organic chemistry, which is going to be on a separate video. We'll do that later. We've got enough to be going on right now. So the basics. You got all those right? Big tick. Well done, us. E. Okay, lead bromide. Let's have a look at some of the um, nuts and bolts. So draw an electrolytic cell labeling the anode, the cathode, the cell, the anions, the cations, the direction of electron flow. This would be a high level question. And in your exam, it would be structured in terms of, there's probably be a picture of the cell. So let's have a look. Um, let's draw my best, neatest handwriting. We need to have a cell at the top, a pair of electrodes going in. Okay. Uh, we need to have a source of heat at the bottom because we need to melt the solid. That's the extent of my art. Okay. Uh, what's it asking me to do? It's asking me to labeled anode and the cathode, right? So, well, the big one, I always think the big one you can break in half and you can make the plus. So this is plus and this is minus. Um, this is the anode and this is the cathode. Now, 
there's a couple of ways one can remember this. Maybe your teacher has told you panic, positive anode, positive anode, which is here, and then negative is cathode, which is there. Uh, I tend to say I hate cats. I really hate cats. I want to kill cats. I'm really, really negative about cats. Okay, so cats, I'm negative about them. So that's the cathode. Whatever works for you, works for you. Okay, <laughs> it's asking me to do the anode and the cathode. Here's the cell. There's the cell. Don't forget, more than one cell is a battery. Uh, anions and cations. So in here, we've got lead bromide. So lead bromide is PBBr2. It is now L. It is liquid. Little L there. When that breaks apart into the ions, we're going to make Pb2 plus and Br minus. Clearly, there are two Br minuses to one Pb2 plus. So let's pop those into solution. So we've got some Pb2 plus and we've got two Br minus. Clearly, this is for explanation purposes. In a real beaker of melted uh, lead bromide, there will be billions, trillions, quadrillions, Google plexes of these things. Okay. Opposites attract. Opposites always attract. So this cathode is negative here. So the positive will be attracted to the cathode. So the lead will go to the cathode. So the cation is the lead. Opposites attract. Clearly, we're happy that lead is, is the cation, so that means that the bromide must be the anion. Okay, so here's the anion. So we've labeled anode, cathode, the cell, the anions, cations, direction of electron flow. Okay, so like charge repels, so it's going to go away, away, and be attracted to the positive anode, away from negative towards the positive. I just got myself a beautiful six marks on that question. I'm rocking and rolling on my GCSE. Happy face. Electrolysis of molten lead bromide. Draw the cell diagram. I did that and identify any products formed. Now, you could just say for products formed, the two products would be Pb2 plus will go to make lead. And my 2Br minus would go to make Bromine. Well, kind of like that. Give me a B. Give me a B. Maybe level 7, level 8, GCSC. Lead is solid. Bromine is a gas. But what's missing? If you want the top grades for this one, you would balance in terms of the electrons. So, 2 plus needs to get to zero charge. We don't write zero in the equation. We're chemists. We're intelligent people. We know it's there. Okay, so Pb2 plus becomes Pb with zero charge. How did it get zero charge? Well, it picked up two electrons. Where did it pick up those two electrons? Here, at the cathode. The cell provided those two electrons for the Pb2. Did that reduce or oxidize? Use a pen, you can see. This is the reduction. How is the reduction? Because oil rig reduction is gain and if it's on the left hand side of the equation it is gain if it's on the right hand side of the equation it is lost it's given away it is released so clearly 2br minus goes to br2 plus 2e minus two electrons if we really want to complete this we would say that these two electrons and these two electrons are the same two electrons and what goes in comes out. That's the circuit, the electrons going around. Buffalo girls go around the outside, right? So we've got Pb2 plus plus 2Br minus going to Br2 plus Pb. And you're still saying, Mr. Midgley, you've not put in the state symbols, G and S, liquid, liquid, gas, solid. I think any higher than that, it will no longer be IGCSE or GCSE, okay? So, did you get them all correct? Have you wrote them down? How do you get them correct if you've got a few missing? Keep doing it, do it again, and do it again. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, molten salts in general. So now, the metal always gets what's oxidized or reduced. Reduced, 
at the cathode. By definition, reduction happens at the cathode. We saw in the previous slide example where the lead was reduced, it got picked up two electrons here and made lead solid. The non-metal always gets oxidized at the anode. So at the anode, we get chlorine and bromine and oxygen. If we've got fluorine, we'd not be around very long to continue to see that because it would inhale it and we'd all die. Yes. I always seems to cheer kids up, I don't know why. Uh, right, redox in terms of half-ion equations are at the anode. So we have the non-metal. Let's think of a non-metal. Let's think of, we did bromine yet, previous slide. So let's have chlorine. So chlorine and all the halogens, the posh term is diatomic. All it means is that two atoms make one molecule. So for the halogens, it's good to know that you have fluorine, chlorine, bromine. They're never going to ask you iodine or astatine. Iodine would be a vapor in a solid. It's sublime. It's just, it's, it's beyond IGCSE or GCSE. And for the other common non-metal oxygen, that's O2 minus. But of course, that exists as O2. We'll have a look at the equation shortly. When they are melted, when they are molten, the ions are separated. They used to be together in a three-dimensional ionic lattice where you've got sodium, chlorine, 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 oops, six chlorines for every sodium, six sodiums for every chlorine. The point, what's the point, Mr. Winchley? The point is this, two Cl minus become Cl2. There's two negatives on this side. This is zero charge here. So I need to add two electrons there. So this is loss, right-hand side is loss. So this is an oxidation. At the cathode, I think I said that uh, you always get metals, molten salts, you always get metals at the cathode. Let's choose a metal we haven't done yet. Let's have a look at, uh, let's have a look at potassium. I like potassium. K plus is going to go to K. One plus here, no charge there. So add one electron there. So our half ion equations, what do they have? They have charged, neutral, electron. Charged, electron, neutral. This is the oxidation and clearly this is the reduction. So for electrolysis of any ionic salts, ionic, don't forget, is metal plus non-metal. You need a source of heat. You could use a uh, Tina Turner, Bunsen burner. Uh, you could use a heating mantle. Um, any other things? You could use a bonfire if you really wanted to. Bit, bit messy. Um, you need a cell and a circuit to do it. And often you need a fume cupboard. Why do you need a fume cupboard? Well. Often the products, things like chlorine, bromine, these are actually toxic. And if you inhale them, they can make you very, very sick indeed. So do it in a fume cupboard. In fact, your teacher will probably have demonstrated this one. Um, I'm assuming you've not been allowed to do this on the bench. Right, aluminium extraction. Now this is AQA only. If you IGCSE, fast forward for a few minutes. Uh, we'll be finished with this one in a few minutes time. Okay, the name of the ore for aluminium extraction is bauxite. You'll probably never say that word again in your life, but bauxite is the name of the ore for aluminium. To lower the melting point, we use cryolite. It's not got tears running down its face. It's just a name that someone gave it and we continue to use it, cryolite. We do this to make the process. Is it cleaner, more environmentally friendly? Nope. <laughs> It's cheaper, okay? Lower melting point, less energy to melt the darn thing so we can electrolyze it and make the products. The electrodes, both anode and, ca and cathode, are made of pure carbon. Pure carbon, anode, and cathode. They're, they're often called inert electrodes in many reactions, but in this one, they are not inert. Inert means they don't get involved in the reaction, but in the electrolysis of aluminium, they do. The anode reaction, anode. So what did I say we get at the anode, metal or non-metal? Well, we've got O2 minus, and it's gonna make O2G. This one, this equation, sorts the uh, top grades from the middle grades. How? Well, like this. This tests your understanding of chemical notation, more than any other equation. 
at IGCSE or AQA GCSE. O2, there are two atoms of oxygen in one molecule of oxygen. That means I need two atoms of oxygen on the left-hand side. Okay, so two O's, two O's. Both sides now have two oxygens. This one on the left-hand side now has a four minus charge because there are two lots of two minus. Two lots of two minus, four minus. This side has zero charge. So what do I need to do? I need to add two times two minus, four electrons. So four minus here. So I need to add four E minus there, four electrons. This one, not very well answered in most uh, exam responses. The cathode is quite straightforward in comparison. Why is it straightforward? Because you've got aluminium three plus, being reduced, because metals are always reduced, going to aluminium. So three plus, plus three electrons, that's good. The oxide, bauxite formula is Al2O3. When we melt that, we break the ionic lattice and we make two lots of Al3 plus and three lots of O2 minus. So the aluminium, this one is reduced, and the uh, oxygen, this is clearly oxidized. Reduction and oxidation are two sides of the same coin. You can't have one without the other. So here's a previous example, label A, B, and C. Let's go blue. So A is, well, this is positive, this is negative. Negative, I hate cats, wanna kill cats. Negative about cats. So this is the cathode, this is the anode. Uh, so that means this A here, well that's the, so that's the carbon anode, and B is the carbon cathode. So what's B and C? Well B in here, this is the cryolite plus bauxite. And then because aluminium is more dense, it sinks to the bottom, and pure aluminium comes off at C. And that's about as much as you need to know for success at aluminium extraction, AQA only. Cool. Aqueous solutions, both, both uh, exam boards want you to know about aqueous solutions. So anode choices, it's either going to be the non-metal or it's going to be oxygen. Non-metal or oxygen, that's it. That's all it's gonna be, nothing else. Don't ever put a metal at the anode. Just know that you're wrong because metals are positive anodes are positive like charges repel same with magnetism same with charges of ions in solution if water what do we get off well water is h2o so it must be oxygen if it's concentrated sodium chloride don't forget we don't need to know dilute if it's concentrated it's going to be chlorine highly toxic the equations for one and two, this is for the top grades. So if it's oxygen, you're gonna have O2 minus, oh, it's that same equation again, isn't it? Two O2 minus, two O2 minus, plus four electrons. There's oxygen at the anode. Chlorine, Cl minus, need two of those because all of the halogens are diatomic molecules. You know that now. Two electrons there. Just checking. Two electrons there. Well done. Cathode choices. So anode was non-metal or oxygen. The cathode is hydrogen or the metal. Okay. If this anode, these are all loss of electrons. So at the anode, we always get the oxidation. The metal will be reduced. If it's more reactive than copper in aqueous solution, more reactive than copper in aqueous solution, it's going to be hydrogen. Nothing else, just hydrogen. If it's less reactive than copper, or if it is copper, and it will be copper, <laughs> it's going to be copper. In fact, at all GCSE, it's either copper or hydrogen at the cathode. If it's copper two plus in solution, you get copper deposited. It, the, the electrode, the cathode will grow 
you'll get a deposit of copper. And it's Cu2 plus, plus two electrons going to copper. Or you're going to get bubbling, which is the hydrogen, which is coming off. Let's have a look. Equations for hydrogen, so you've got H plus going to H2, so 2H plus, it's a reduction, so two electrons on the left-hand side. Copper, copper's print is always 2 plus at GCSE. Yeah, I think it's always 2 plus at GCSE. Copper 2 plus, plus two electrons, goes to copper. If they asked you to say what you see, which they often do that, you would say that there's bubbling from here. You see bubbles of hydrogen gas. If, for instance, uh, it's uh, sulfuric acid, electrolysis, or for copper, they want to say you see a copper-coloured metal, because copper is a colour as well as a metal. Easy to remember, right? Happy days. Got all those correct? Did you? Big tick. Well done. Electrolysis of water. This can be done using a Hoffman voltameter. You don't have to use a Hoffman voltameter. It's one way to do it. The water is acidified. Why is the water acidified? Because H2O is two non-metals. It's a covalent compound. Covalent. So surely you can't electrolyze it. Well, hmm. <laughs> the rules are proved by their exceptions, right? So water can actually ionize into H plus and OH minus. Okay. You can persuade it to uh, ionize by adding acid. If you add an acid, then it will ionize much more. In fact, the acids provide the ion. It's a bit of a cheat, but uh, it's a nice thing to, to, to do. If we electrolyze water, pure water, the electrodes are made of, well, you can make them, they have to be inert. You can make them of carbon, or the much more expensive one is platinum, you know, platinum electrodes, platinum leaf. The ratio of H to O is two to one. And this actually proves the formula of water as being H2O. Because the ratio of gases produced at hydrogen at the cathode, you get two lots and oxygen to the anode, you're going to get one lot in terms of volume. So the anode reaction is this. Now there are two ways you can do it. You could do, you could pretend you got, you're not pretending, it's true, you got some O2 minus going to O2, oh it's that one again, 4E minus, then at the cathode, oh it's this one again, 2H plus going to two, plus two electrons, goes to H2G. But there's another reaction at the anode. Let's just have a look, because I wrote it down, just to remind myself. So it's 4OH minus, goes to 2H2O, plus O2, plus 4E minus. So both of those reactions, this one and this one, are acceptable at the anode. Okay, now it's asking you to draw. Are you ready to draw? Right, let's get a black pen. So, uh, again, this one, We'll test my artistic drawing skills. We're going to have two upside down test tubes. There we go. In here, draw the cell labeling anode and the cathode. So we're going to need to have some wires coming out of here and there. And let's have this one plus and this one minus. Plus is the anode minus is the cathode. In solution, we have uh, blue, let's have some H plus, and OH minus, which came from here and here. We're going to see uh, bubbles coming up here. It's going to displace, if that's my hydrogen. The oxygen is going to come up here at the anode, and this is my oxygen. And I was trying to make the ratio 2 to 1, Go on, Red. There we go. Two to one, so it's H2O. Labeled anode, yes, we did that. The cathode, we did that. The electrolyte, this is the electrolyte. The electrolyte is the thing that is electrolyzed. Okay, nothing more difficult than that. Oxygen, oxygen's at the anode, that's here. We've got that one, and hydrogen is at the cathode, that's here. Six marks. Go you. Sodium chloride, uh, this is on both schemes, so you all need to know that. Sodium chloride aqueous is also called brine. 
okay, the briny, salty water. Seamen call it that, so it goes to sea. The products that we get are sodium hydroxide, hydrogen, and chlorine. Why do we care? We care because it's on our syllabus and we need to pass our exam. We also care. Sodium hydroxide is used in the cleaning industry. It dissolves uh, fats. Um, you can buy it, it's called lye, and you put it down the drain and it dissolves all the, flats, uh, the fats that have uh, built up over time. Hydrogen is used to hydrogenate unsaturated fats. Hydrogenate unsaturated fats. There we go. <laughs> unsaturated fats. And chlorine is used uh, both in uh, pharmaceuticals, so in medicines, it's also used as a disinfectant. Uh, TCP is trichlorophenol, which you may well have gargled with if you had a sore throat. Okay, uh, draw a schematic of the cell. It's going to be very similar to the uh, water electrolysis, but let's try and make it a little bit different. Um, let's do it old school. So you could do it like this. Here's the electrodes. Here is the electrolyte. So in the solution, we have Na+, plus, Cl-, minus. we obviously have OH-, minus, uh, and we have uh, H+, plus knocking around from the water. We've not turned the cell on yet. We turn it on. The long one is the, yep, anode. So that's anode, that's positive. Small one is cathode, so that's negative. What we're going to see well, we're going to see some hydrogen. Hydrogen, opposites attract, is a cation, and Na plus is a cation. We don't see sodium given off. If we saw sodium given off, it would react with the water immediately and start sparking and flames and things. So we get 2H plus, uh, plus our two electrons, goes to hydrogen gas, and we'd see bubbles around here. So this would be hydrogen. Okay, so the hydrogen is slowly removed from the solution. At the anode, we have competing anions. We've got chloride and hydroxide. OH minus, well, what's going to happen? That's, no, the one that is reduced because it is concentrated is the chloride, and that's 2Cl minus, going to Cl2, plus two electrons. These two electrons, these two electrons are the same two electrons, but if you get those two uh, reactions done, then at the cathode, the cathode, <laughs> cathode is where reduction takes place. Reduction is the gain of electrons, that's the hydrogen. And the anode is the chloride going to chlorine. Is that enough to get me full marks? I think so. And all, I think this is the last, last one. Uh, this electroplating, the copper is made of pure copper. The anode is made of the converse impure copper. So at the anode, it's going, to slow, it's going to be copper going to copper 2 plus, plus 2 electrons, and at the cathode, because anode is oxidation by definition, cathode is reduction by definition, copper 2 plus, plus 2 electrons, reduction is gain, copper solid. Okay. This is a useful process. Why? We need pure copper we need pure copper for use in the electronics industry. Okay, impure copper quickly uh, loses conductivity in comparison with pure copper. We need pure copper to get high conductive materials to allow those electrons to flow in things like uh, home appliances, even in your mobile phone. Draw a schematic of the cell. We can do that. It's the one that you're familiar with now. Let's get a beaker. Let's put a cell at the top. Here's the anode. Here's the cathode. Here's the electrolyte. Electrolyte. Uh, in here, we have copper 2 plus. So, copper 2 plus, the cathode, is that positive or negative? Negative. That's positive. So, the cathode is going to start to grow. It's going to get bigger, isn't it? Because of the cathode, here, Cu2 plus is picking up two electrons and depositing copper metal. 
So this is start to this will grow and get bigger and bigger. It'll get a bigger lump of copper produced here at the cathode. If the anode starts like this, then over time it's going to get smaller and smaller. So the anode will decrease in size and the cathode will grow in size. And what you actually find at the bottom is something called anode mud. But you don't really need to know that. Okay, so electroplating, um, we can use it to uh, make pure copper for electronics. Or we could electroplate, I don't know, uh, a nickel spoon and electroplate it with silver using the same process. Put some silver ions in solution, plate the spoon with silver. It looks really expensive and posh, but it's not. It's just nickel underneath. And you can charge a fortune and people believe you. That's how you are duped. Fake news, fake spoons. <laughs> okay. So let's review our syllabus dot points. Did you look at all of these? Have you done, do you know lead bromide? Do you know molten aqueous? Do you know redox? Uh, do you know sodium chloride, aqueous, sulfuric acid, same as water? Remember it persuaded the water to make H plus and no H minus. Electroplate Cu. If you're AQA, know your aluminium extraction and exactly the same as IGCSE. So the way that I want you to do this is now you've watched the video, print off the notes underneath for a very small charge and then write your answers on, review with the video, and see where you got wrong. And every time you do a new iteration, a new uh, working through of this, each new piece will hopefully stick in your beautiful brain. I think this is a, a very useful way to learn electrolysis. Okay, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget, smash that subscribe button or that subscribe button. Well done, keep working, you'll get there. Best wishes, thank you.